the heart is this really elegant pump and there's four valves in the heart and the easiest way to think about them is they're check valves or one-way valves. They're there to keep the blood going in one direction. And so when a valve fails, it's failing at its job. And that's because it's either leaking, what we call a regurgitant valve, or it's not opening well, what we call a stenotic valve. Most commonly, we see older people have a normally shaped, what we call a tricuspid aortic valve, wear out. And it wears out slowly over time, eventually becomes thickened and calcified and stenotic, that is, it doesn't open very well. The process that we see in more often younger patients where that valve was shaped abnormally at birth, what we typically call a bicuspid valve. If it's a leaking valve, we try and repair them. So that's a very good option both for the two leaflet valves, the bicuspid valves, and for the valves that are associated with enlarged aortas and three leaflet valves. So we try and repair them as much as possible and we have great success with that. If it is a calcified valve or narrowed down valve, then the options are a mechanical valve or a biological valve or something like a Ross procedure or a human valve or what we call a freestyle valve, which is a valve without struts to hold the leaflets and we sew a pink aortic root into position. Mechanical valves are made out of titanium and they have a carbon coating, like a ceramic coating on them. The advantage is that valve may last for decades and decades. The disadvantage is that you can get clot that can form on those man-made surfaces. You have to be on blood thinners throughout the life of that valve. But then there's also options about the approach. Lesser invasive approaches to deliver a surgical valve where we can make a small incision between the ribs or a small partial incision in the sternum. And there's advantages and disadvantages to each of those kinds of approaches that have to be tailored to the patient. The least invasive approach is a transcatheter valve replacement. TAVA stands for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. For TAVA what we do is we give some local anesthetic in the groin, then we put in a wire, then we put in a dilator, so we dilate up the artery, and so basically a tube that we can stretch, it can expand that tube, and then we take a valve made of stainless steel and it's crimped down, it's compressed around a balloon. We then slide it across to the valve. We do x-rays, we take various angles, we do some what we call angiograms, we can get, inject some dye to make sure we're in the right position. There's a syringe connected to the balloon and we push hard on that and expand the balloon and that seats the new valve in the calcium and then you take out the sheaths and it's a very quick procedure for most patients and hospital one or two days. So we have to balance those three considerations of what a patient's aortic valve disease is like, what that patient's overall condition is like, and what our expertise is in offering these various things and tailor that choice to our patient. And so at the Cleveland Clinic we can offer the full spectrum of treatment for all valve diseases. We were one of the first centers to do a lot of aortic valve repairs. We've got the biggest experience. We reported a series of just under 2,000 patients with aortic valve repair. The next closest is like 125. We've got huge experience and we've been involved in developing valves. The term doctor comes from the Latin to teach. So we're teachers. So I have always felt that it has to be a decision that we make together. And so it's my job to teach my patient and their family everything I can about this choice and then make that choice together. <laughs>